What if the universe has a memory? Not a metaphorical memory, but a literal physical imprint of everything that's ever happened. No, I am being deadly serious. This is a real phenomena predicted by Albert Einstein in his theory of general relativity known as gravitational wave memory. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, we're talking about the memory of the universe. Now you've seen my video on gravitational waves already, right? If not, then you should watch it first. Otherwise, you'd remember that gravitational waves are the cosmic ripples from colliding black holes. These waves stretch and squish space-time in a way that we can measure with our massive interferometer detectors. But what if these ripples didn't just fade away? What if they left a permanent physical imprint on our universe? What if the universe has a memory? So imagine some inertial masses that are floating in space. As the gravitational wave passes through, it stretches and squishes space-time so that the distances between them changes. Now, normally, once the wave has passed through, things would go back to normal. But with gravitational memory, they don't. After the wave has passed through, the masses are permanently displaced. Now, this is what's known as displacement memory. It comes in two forms. The linear version caused when massive particles or radiation escape to infinity. So think like a supernova explosion. And the nonlinear version, where it's actually the energy of the gravitational waves themselves that leave behind that shift. In both cases, space time has literally remembered that waves passed by. But that's not the only kind of memory. There's also spin memory. Instead of shifting distances, it shows up as a permanent difference in timing. If two light beams circle in opposite directions around a loop, a burst of gravitational waves can cause one to arrive slightly later than the other, even if they started in sync. Now, this is a kind of twist left in space-time. To really understand why the universe can hold onto these scars, we have to talk about symmetries. A symmetry is transformation that you can make on a system that leaves the physics unchanged. So imagine, say, a perfect snowflake. If you were to rotate it 60 degrees, it would look the same. Now, that would be a geometric symmetry. In physics, our symmetries are like when you do something, like shift or rotate, the laws of nature stay the same. The Poincaré group is a set of symmetries that let us move around on a perfectly flat sheet. We can translate in a straight line or rotate without changing the physics. However, when gravitational waves are present, the space-time isn't flat at infinity, and we need the BMS group, short for bon metzner sachs to describe it. The BMS group includes an infinite number of extra symmetries called supertranslations. These are like angle-dependent translations. Instead of shifting all of space-time forward in time uniformly, you can shift one direction of infinity more than another. Think of it like this. Imagine a sky around you as a sphere. A regular time translation would move the whole sky forward by, say, one second. But a super translation would let you move one part of the sky forward one second, another part of the sky forward two seconds, and another part of the sky might stay the same. That's why the group is infinite dimensional. Gravitational memory is a physical manifestation of these symmetries. A burst of gravitational waves shifts space-time from one BMS state to another. That change is permanent and it's literally the universe's memory of the event. Gravitational memory also has profound implications for fundamental physics. They have a physical manifestation right on the edge of black holes themselves. For decades, we thought that black holes were simple objects, defined only by their mass, their spin, and their electric charge. This was the famous no-hair theorem. But in 2016, Stephen Hawking, Malcolm Perry, and Andrew Stominger proposed that black holes might carry what they call soft hair. This soft hair isn't the kind of hair that you can see. 
It's a layer of particles with zero energy, like soft gravitons, and they live right on the black hole's event horizon, the edge of a black hole. And here's the amazing part. This soft hair is precisely analogous to the gravitational memory effect. The BMS symmetries that cause a permanent shift in space-time far away will also cause a permanent encoding of information on the black hole's horizon. Now, if this is true, then it ties directly into the black hole information paradox. Information then isn't lost when it falls into a black hole. Instead, it's encoded into these soft gravitational imprints. If black holes have soft hair, then that would make them distinguishable from one another and give them an infinite collection of extra properties that are in principle observable. So the gravitational memory effect is what really we say is happening far away from the black hole and soft hair is what happens at its surface. These are two sides of the same coin and it isn't just a coincidence. The link between gravitational memory, soft hair and the BMS symmetries is so fundamental that it's been nicknamed the infrared triangle. It means that these three ideas aren't just related. They're different ways of describing the same deep law of physics. It shows us that space-time has a built-in memory that connects what happens far away from a cosmic event to something that happens on a black hole's event horizon. All of these are rooted in the same elegant symmetry. Okay, so here's the frustrating bit. With all the black hole collisions that our gravitational wave detectors at LIGO have detected, you might think that we've already measured this memory. But LIGO actually really struggles to see it. And this is because LIGO sensitivity is best for those short-lived, high-frequency part of the signal, the chirp, when black holes spiral in together. Instead, the memory is a very slow, almost step-like change in space-time. It's essentially hiding at the low-frequency end of the spectrum, where LIGO's detectors are swamped with seismic noise. It might be possible one day with thousands of events accumulated over many, many years, but it's unlikely that LIGO will detect it. But LISA, on the other hand, unlike LIGO on Earth, will fly in space with detectors separated by millions of kilometers. Now, this gives it exquisite sensitivity to the long, slow changes in space-time caused by memory. In fact, LISA is expected to measure gravitational memory almost routinely from massive black hole mergers. It does make you wonder though, doesn't it, if the black hole can hold on to these classical scars, could it also have a kind of quantum memory? Now, this idea that space-time can remember events has inspired proposals for quantum memory cells. This is still highly speculative, but it's quite a fascinating idea. Some physicists have proposed that at the smallest, most fundamental scales, space-time might not be a smooth sheet, but instead a lattice of quantum memory cells. These cells would be a kind of cosmic hard drive capable of storing the quantum information of every particle that's ever existed. An interesting thought, but it's all theoretical physics for now. Now, remember, the universe never forgets. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. Use the link below to join. And if you enjoyed this, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. Hey space cats, fly with me to the stars Faster than light, soaring past Mars